Good evening, wrestling fans. It's Monday night, so you know what that means. It's time for AIWF Ringside Wrestling. Hi, I'm Mad Matt Carter, coming to you from the PWD studios in lovely Concord, North Carolina. Um, just a, It's a been a big weekend in wrestling, everybody. Uh, we've got a lot we want to talk about. Uh, SummerSlam was this weekend. Uh, Ric Flair's last match was le- this weekend. It was last night. Uh, it's just, it's been a, a very, very interesting weekend. Today is August 1st, so that means it's officially deal with the steel month. And AIWF Mid-Atlantic Wrestling is going to be at the Surrey County Fair coming up starting this weekend, August the 5th. Uh, and for those of you who are not familiar with it, uh, we normally... Um, we normally do two, three shows throughout the day, three or four match, three or four matches uh, per show. It's no telling who you're going to see on the cards at the fair shows because uh, really it's just, it's an open invitation to indie wrestlers all around to come and, 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 and wrestle. So it's a good chance that you will see matches at the Surrey County Fair that you do not see anywhere else. So that's always a good time. And uh, and so we, we look forward to going to the fair and, you know, me personally eating a lot of fair food and all that kind of stuff. I'll be with you up there this weekend. Uh, probably not going to be able to make the 13th, just me personally. But... Um, we uh, definitely are looking forward to the fair shows. They're always a blast, always a blast. And there's a new carnival company doing the fair this year. Uh, it's my understanding that they are going to have more rides than they did last year. And uh, it's just going to be a, a heck of a good time. So referee Bill Pauly and Rick Diesel have joined us. Good evening, gentlemen. How are you as we wind out, as we close out this, what has been a wild weekend in wrestling? Oh, I'm good, man. Pretty How good. are you? Good, great, great. All right, now um, we're going to get right, right to it. Bill Pauley told me last week that he wanted to be on this show, that he had a had some news for us. I have not pre-screened this because I like living on the edge, and uh, I think Rick Diesel would appreciate that. You know, just jump in with both feet and see what happens. So, Bill Pauley. I'm going to give the floor to you to make your uh, make your announcement, share your news. Uh, so, fans, I don't know what this is going to be. It may be great. It may be a disaster. But we're going to find out right now. Go ahead, Bill. Well, you know how I'm a regular donator of sponsor of this hey, and continuing it. Absolutely. I'm also, the, the months that allow me to do that, I am also going to start donating a hundred dollars to IWF for whatever they need, whether it's ring repair, maintenance for the building, whatever. Oh wow! Okay, well that's uh that's pretty cool. Uh, I I would consider that great news. How about you, Rick Diesel? Yes, sir. We could just uh, we we'll make a we we'll make a banner with his. Uh... I'm assuming he's doing it. I'm assuming you're doing it in the name of the uh, the same organization. Yeah, and to help make sure and to help y'all yeah. guys out because I love I love it up there in Mount Airy. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I, I enjoy going back there. I, ne- I never get tired of it. That's for sure. So, well, thank you, Bill Pauly. Well, you know, hang out with us. We we've, we've got a lot yeah. to go over uh today let me see if i can't get our slideshow going here let me see if i can't drag it to the other side here i got two monitors might as well use them um uh, well i was a little skinny let's see uh does it look does it look better now yeah there you go all right there we go so speaking of advertising with us yep we're putting the headlock on high advertising prices uh as we talked about previously It's very affordable to advertise here on Ringside Wrestling. You know, you're getting your spots on not only Facebook Live every Monday night at 7 o'clock, but also archived on YouTube where they'll be there forever, as well as 
hey, all your favorite podcasting platforms. It's only 10 bucks a month or $6 a week if you want to go that route. 10 bucks a month gets you a 30 second to one minute read, or we could produce a video commercial for you for $20 a month. I mean, I'm sorry, for $30 a month, or if you want to do it that way, $20 a week. And all of these platforms will be covered, including mentions on our Roku channel. You can reach out to us at AIWF20 at hotmail.com, or you can hit me up on Twitter at, <laughs> at, at Mad Matt Concord, at Mad Matt Concord. If you want to hit me up on Twitter, you can do that. I don't have the official AIWF account, but I'm going to start giving out my Twitter handle on here. Good, man. So another play. Another, I hadn't made a slide yet because I was on the fence whether I was going to do this or not, but it just seemed like a good idea right now. So anyway, I'm going to get there. I'm going to put our Twitter to more business type uses. So, um, hey, like Neil Leathers used to say, there's nothing like a good fence. (laughs) Neil Leathers joke. Oh, if you had Neil Leathers, (laughs) dude, I had, I don't know, Matt, back before your time. Somebody made an Atomic Playboy reference on my uh, Facebook the other day. I don't know. You don't remember Atomic Playboy. He was one of the very first wrestlers in AWF. No. He uh, he didn't last long. But he tried. He yeah. did try. Atomic Playboy. I like the sound yeah. of that. Wow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I made a, a, a t- I mean, this is like, like the first year or so of AWF and this guy named Atomic Playboy. Wow, that's hilarious. If you guys want to jump in on the conversation, give us a call, 336-429-2338, 336-429-2338. Of course, if you're watching on YouTube or on podcast platforms, you want to tune in to the live show on Facebook Live on the AIWF Mid-Atlantic page yes. Monday nights at 7 o'clock because you don't want to call this number at odd hours of the night. Uh, you know, I don't know where what else what oh the phone's people? turned off don't worry about that it's all oh. for one hour a week oh okay but, hey, hey, but the in. best way is to is to join uh on the mid-atlantic facebook page like david from lynchburg who's uh watching there and player who still quite quite figure out who i am but that's okay <laughs> i've met him all i right. understand it's okay i forgive him <laughs> hey player and hey david and lynchburg thank you for tuning in uh, oh crocky <laughs> Oh, Crockett Town. Uh, and we're going to talk about, speaking of Jim Crockett promotions, we're going to talk about, you know, uh, I was Have having, you lost your Woody yet? Uh, Matt, it's been, it's been over, it's been 24 hours now. Yes, finally. Uh, about, okay. uh, about an hour ago. Finally settled. I know you were, what, you were, what is it? Hella excited yes. over that show. And, and it wasn't just Ric Flair. It was the whole Crockett thing. The, yep. the, the, the whole Crockett spectacular it was and um and i want to get to that let me go uh, speak you know we got bill Polly on here with us and you know you he has been spot uh, helping sponsor the show and like i said the uh reason he's been sponsoring this company is because you know he's disabled and he's been told his whole life he couldn't do things um he still has his learning disability since he was kid but he's been in, uh, dreaming to be in the wrestling business now has been for 14 years and he's starting over now as a referee to show his son, who is also disabled, and others who are disabled as well, that they can live their dreams wherever, whatever it may be. Now, found a new organization here in North Carolina to help out folks with disabilities. It's called the Arc of North Carolina. And I've got a screen grab of their website for you, all, uh, available for those of you watching. But the website, for those of you listening, is arcnc.org that's arcnc.org for more information and find out uh what you can do to help disabled people or if you know somebody with a disability you can reach out to them for assistance they are the arc of north carolina and their website again it's arcnc arcnc.org that's arcnc.org and not Bobby Dalton, but I coughed into the microphone at 7.09. So if you had nine minutes in, drink now. So here we go. We are on Instagram. We just crossed 150 followers this week. And uh, I am so happy about that. That Instagram really, really took off. and But it, it, it took off really fast, got to 100 really fast, and then it kind of slowed down. 
but it's been growing ever since then. So we're trying to keep a fresh content on it, there for it you. It ain't Kardashian numbers, but we'll take them. That's right. I mean, come on, we're a regional. But I mean, now if if I need to do something like a t- like a tape or you know show my butt, whatever, I can do it. I don't care. I'll do it. All right, there you have I it. I can do a sex tape. Rick Diesel willing to do a sex tape to get the Instagram numbers up. I don't think it, it Instagram's that kind of service though, Rick Diesel. I think you might be thinking of OnlyFans. Um, Ooh, we don't want to get into OnlyFans because somebody has started one. Oh my. Um, well, anyway, so AIWF Hall of Famer Brian Danzig has joined us on the show tonight. This is Brian's first Ooh. appearance on Ringside Wrestling, I do believe. Yes. Welcome he, to the hey. show, sir. He's big in he's big in, in Europe, man, in England. He's huge in England. Really? I know. I've been there and I've heard the stories. He's huge in England. Wow. Welcome to the show, Brian. Thank you for joining us. Hey, by the way, uh, speaking of Bobby Dalton, for some reason he's with a nurse with smelly kidney stones. Hang on, man. Let me go. Brian, you're muted, buddy. Oh no, no, I'm sorry. Bobby is nursing a stinking kidney stone. That's what he's. <laughs> wow, that again, I thought that, he was with a nurse with smelly kidney stones. Well, he said he's nursing a stinking kidney stone. That's what it was. Did you? Uh, is she on OnlyFans too? Is, is, oh, uh, this is going downhill. We do not want to get on that OnlyFans, but we can. Yes, we can. We can. So, uh, look, this is not the latest. What I'm about to show you, picture of. The uh, ringside seating here, but this is uh, this is the links. It's brownpapertickets.com, event 5514990. For floor seats, the deal with the steel, and the bleacher seats are the same site, but event slash 5515848. Uh, Would but, it matter if I sent you the latest one now, Matt? Yeah, I can I tell you what. Go ahead and do that. Let me get out of the slideshow. We'll just chit-chat. A minute. Oh, I got you, man. Yeah, I could put that in real quick. So Brian Danzig has joined us. Welcome to the show. This is Brian's first time here. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us today, sir. That's a pleasure. Well, to we, be. Uh, Brian is, uh, has been a regular on our commentary team here recently and has added some tremendous insight Uh so much to the point that I kind of like to, you know, I, I always kind of stand and listen to the commentators anyway, but I, I also like lean in a little closer when you're there, Brian, because I know I'm, if nothing else, I'm going to get a couple of zingers. <laughs> hey, and Facebook got- Messenger, man. <laughs> yeah, I got it. I'm pulling it up okay. now. Okay, go Sorry, ahead. Sorry, Brian, go ahead, bro. Talk about yourselves. <laughs> But no, I just I try to uh, uh, keep it uh, entertaining, joke around when it's you know the appropriate times, and then you know there are times when it's when you when you take it that seriously. Mm-hmm. You just got to know uh, uh, wh- when to do what, wh- when to do what, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's see here. So it, it was a big weekend in wrestling, and yeah, I was hot to try it over the uh, the uh, the Ric Flair's last match show last night. Did did any of you guys I had to break uh, out the rubber underwear? Well, it wasn't quite that bad, but it was damn close. <laughs> uh, it it was dangerous and close. I say that. I, yeah, you are over some Crockett, brother. But yeah, um, and and well, having see the selling point for me was that Tony and David Crockett were going to do the show. And I got a little spook, you know, kind of thinking, man, you know, I know how they'll bait and switch you on stuff like this sometimes. So I sent a tweet to Conrad Thompson and asked him, are they going to call the show whole show? And I never got an answer back. And, uh, and I figured, well, you know, they're doing the whole wrestling convention, star cast and all that kind of stuff. You know, maybe he doesn't have, maybe he's not watching Twitter right now, but I was thrilled. They did the whole show. Although, when they had the GCW guys match, they had the GCW play-by-play guys, same way with Ring of Honor, same way with Impact. They had the different commentators come in and help them out. And um, I thought that was really cool because you could tell David Crockett hadn't called a wrestling match in, well, since the 80s. 
And, uh, but he had, I, I'm telling you, during that Lucha match with those four Lucha guys, David Crockett was losing his mind when they were jumping off the ropes and spinning and going uh, to the floor. He sounded like he did back in the 80s, like, whoa, look at that. You know, I mean, because David's never been like a brilliant wrestling commentator. He just reacts with emotion. And, yeah. and, and, and that's the way it was last night. It was, it was just incredible. Uh, but did any of you guys get to see that show? I did not. No, I just saw, uh, I know uh, D Nice was uh, at the show. Oh, was he? he? Uh, yeah, because, and he was uh, he was uh, posting videos like every every couple of minutes. There'd be a new video. <laughs> That's awesome. New video. Don's posting new video. I'm like, I'm gonna get to watch this whole show just for <laughs> <laughs> two minute clips. No just kidding. Show, sharing clips on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, it, it it was amazing. But look here on the screen, guys. Here's the updated version of the seating chart. As you can see, front row seats are gone except for section C, uh, which that one's kind of weird, Rick Diesel. The back row sold out first on that. Rick, by request. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's all I know. Well, then maybe they want to be there well, in the cor corner where they feel like they're safe from the uh, all the action. I could see that wanting to be on the floor but not uh, directly in, in the front. You know, that's, uh, uh, you know, Personally, I would prefer to be in the front, but I can see why someone wouldn't want to be uh, that close to the uh, to the action. Yeah, some some people just they they prefer to be back. I mean, you know, so uh, that that was my request. And, and anybody who wants that, they can look at these shit and, and you know, like I said, the red dots have been sold. Uh, the black dots are available. So if you buy seats at the ticket links, brown paper ticket ticket links, uh, you can send a message to AIWF Mid Atlantic on Facebook to request seats. Other than that, you know, we're just kind of giving them first come, first serve. You know what I'm saying? So the 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 front row was like the first tickets bought uh, over in section B. The stuff behind the front row was all requested. Section mm -hmm. C, the last row was requested. So, you know, other, other than that, they're kind of just going first come, first serve. Okay. So, if I wanted row two, seven, eight, and nine, I could request that through, yes. the, through the round paper ticket site. And you guys can make well, that. Well, you would have to. I'm not sure if you can do it through the brown paper ticket site because I've never bought tickets to them. You know, we've just hosted uh, the sale, but you can send a message to the AIWF Mid-Atlantic Facebook and say, hey, I just purchased tickets. Can I have row two, uh, you know, section A, row two, seat six or seven, eight, and nine? Mm -hmm. And, okay. you know, if, if you're quick enough, then we'll give it to you. If they're not, if, if by the time you do it, they're not available, we'll let you know and we'll work out something. It's, it's all we know to do right now because, you know, we're, we're not a coliseum, so it's yeah. hard for us to to have the technology to, to buy those seats, you know, off as they, as they're bought. Yeah. But if we are, and someday maybe we will, I mean, you know what I'm saying? We're not live nation, but uh -huh. we are indie nation. Yeah. Thank God we're not. A lot of the fees you have to pay to go to a concert <laughs> yeah. these days. It's ridiculous. Yes. Uh, but okay. So let's talk. Uh, I, I want to get, want to talk about the last match with Ric Flair a little bit. Uh, it, you know, I, I will say this is just my analysis. Uh, the crowd in Nashville was really good by, you know, when it, during the pre-show, I was worried, Rick Diesel, you know, I was telling you, I was like, I don't know, man, it don't look like, but it's about half full. But then as the, after seven o'clock and the actual pay-per-view started and they got a couple of matches into the card, um, it, it seemed like it filled up, you know, and, and the camera shots that they showed, and, and I know you can manipulate that kind of stuff and everything, but they were taking pretty wide shots of the building. And, and it filled up pretty good. But the crowd reminded me, I've talked about before, the AEW crowd. It's, it's Charlotte and how they kind of reacted to everything. And it, it was like, eh, they want to see wrestling, but they're not. This crowd that was there last night was not an AEW crowd. They did not. 
they were not a, a normal AEW crowd, not an AEW Charlotte crowd. They were kind of like not really into as much stuff as like the AEW crowd seems to be pretty easy to please. You know, you just come out there or the, or like the old NXT crowd, you know, they would chant, this is awesome at an empty ring, right? But the crowd last night, they seemed to like there would be things that they liked, like when Bubba Ray Dudley in the in the Battle Royal did the old bit, you know, where you know Devon get the tables uh, with one of those guys. Uh, they reacted to that, um, and then they were kind of quiet first couple of matches, although you know they're somewhat into it. But man, when when Brock Anderson and Brian Pillman came out, it that was the spark that that place needed. And I and they wrestled Ricky Morton and Kerry Morton. Robert Gibson was at ringside. Arn Anderson was at ringside with, with his son. That seemed to kind of light the fire. The, you know they got going. Uh, they were pretty up for that match. Uh, then they ha- I had a couple of other matches. Then the Briscoes came out and fought the Von Ericks, which I don't know if you guys have seen the new version of the Briscoes. Brian, I'm pretty sure you probably have. Oh uh, yeah. They came out to Leonard Skinner's Give Me Back My Bullets, and that place just went crazy. And and they didn't have a really long match, but it was good. But uh, you know, they they just they're phenomenal. I've seen them wrestle a couple of times now, and that they they're just it's a shame, and I don't know why, but I understand that uh TBS has told Tony Khan, no way are they ever gonna be on our network. I don't know what that's about. I don't know if you know Brian, Rick Diesel, if you know Bill, if you know, please educate me what, what the deal is with that. So uh, specifically, I, I can just imagine, though, that the Briscoes are very uh, uh, wild and, uh, you know, have th- that untamed gimmick, say whatever they want kind mm-hmm. of thing. Yeah. And I, bet, uh, I think that's what uh tbs is afraid of i think they're i think they're just too hot for tv but also that's their appeal though Mm -hmm. i think if they if they watered themselves down for television they would they would lose that that appeal and so you know it's really just in everybody's best interest to have them uh wrestle for ring of honor and not be not be on tbs yeah, and it's unfortunate too because you can tell that they take the wrestling business seriously. They treat it with respect. Yeah, and they do. I would love to see them just because you know I I love to see how everybody. I want to see everybody successful, but I mean I just think as good as those two are and the the minds they have for this business, it'd be nice to see them make some big money. You know, Briscoes. Sorry, yeah. I was answering questions on the <laughs> oh okay well, hey. on the message on the messages over at the AWF Mid Atlantic Facebook page. The Briscoes are also pretty good chicken farmers, for what I understand. Yeah, that's right. They they were saying oh. last night that uh, well, they were saying on Wrestling Observer Radio today. Uh, Mike Sempervivi said that they they missed billing mismatched the Battle of the Farmers with the Von Ericks and the and the Briscoes, <laughs> and I think he was right. I think he was on the side. Like, that made me tickled me when I heard it. So, uh, so what kind of questions do we have on the board? And what, well, what... right now, uh, people are just asking about uh, seats. Uh, Vicky says, "Hey, hey, Vicky," Matt. and I'm right now. We're just talking about the uh, uh, reserve seating and stuff. So, just to answer a few questions on that. Uh, they was asking someone asked about reserve bleacher seating, and I explained to them that what it is is it's hard to reserve the bleachers because they don't have sections, and it's hard to, to do seat numbers. So what we're doing is if you buy, uh, if you go to brownpapertickets.com uh, or you go through the link and you get your, your bleacher seatings, we're going to open the doors early for those people who have those tickets and they can go in and pick the seats, you know, get the best seats in the bleachers early. Mm. I have first choice of the bleacher seats. Oh, okay. All right. And and that get, get you access, probably early access to the Rock and Roll Express too if yes. they've got a merchandise table yes. set up. So. It will get you early access to uh, the Rock and Roll Express. Yeah, and um, and they do have an excellent merchandise table. So yeah, you it'd be worth the extra extra bucks just to uh, just to be able to get to them first. So 
here's what we're talking about, folks. It's Deal with the Steel, the 25th anniversary. It's coming up Saturday, August 20th at Veterans Park. All matches will be inside a steel cage. And yes, the final appearance in Mount Area of the Rock and Roll Express as they take on the Mid Atlantic Outlaws. And uh, it's going to be wild, gentlemen. I mean, Deal with the Steel is just, it's wild every year. I'll tell you what Matt, we'll do. Matt, what? Matty, look, I'm supposed to wait on this because we haven't got them in yet, but they're supposed to be in tomorrow. But I, I want to, God bless it. I'm afraid that if they come in, all right, look, I'm going to take a chance. We've made a T-shirt for, um, we've made a T-shirt for Deal with the Steel, the 25th anniversary. And I am going to send you, here's the thing. We're not sure. I never like to release a T-shirt design until it comes in. We put it on a T-shirt. You know what I'm saying? And it works, right? Because I'm just, it's my OCD. I can't stand it. But I'm going to send you uh, a picture so you can put it up of the potential. We'll know tomorrow, probably, or um, or we'll potential. come back on next week and apologize to everybody. <laughs> yeah, I, if, if it's don't work, we'll come on next week and apologize. But everybody's everything seems to be in good shape. So I'm going to send you a picture, Matt, of the potential AIWF 25th anniversary deal with the steel T-shirt. Now, before you show it, I want to hear. I want to see your reaction to it. Okay. Okay, I'm waiting. I, I got the message. It's thing coming up. now. All but right. Don't <laughs> don't uh, don't don't show it till I can get your reaction. I want to see what you think of it. <laughs> and I, as God is my witness, that is the T-shirt. Swear to you. It will be available if it, everything works out and transfer and everything comes out good. It will be available this week for pre-order. Oh my god! What do you think, Matt? I absolutely love it. Oh my goodness! I can't even put into words. I can't even describe it I, without. I'm just gonna have to make a slide and show it. And oh. I do have permission to do this. Okay, <laughs> from Ricky. Okay. Well, what about Robert? That's the one I'd be more concerned with. <laughs> Oh, well, uh, Robert. Hey, Ricky said, go for it, man, whatever you want. I said, all right, Ricky. <laughs> so oh, you man. show it, Matt. Robert, all if right. you don't like it, take it. And it's, I'm glad Brian's on here because he'll, I think he'll, I think, I think he's right up that alley too. Uh, yeah, I think Brian's going to appreciate this. Hang on just a second. Let me get it into the slideshow here. <laughs> and we'll, we'll look at this. Oh, bar Oh, mercy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I get to get it sized up here just uh, as we edit on the fly. Yes, this is live to tape. We don't do any post production editing. Uh, and let me see. All right, get ready. Here it comes. I want to see Brian's reaction. Uh, can you guys see it? I see it. Oops. Hang on. Ah, that ain't it. That there is it. it. <laughs> Look at Brian. <laughs> what do you think, Brian? What? You're muted again, buddy. <laughs> oh, yeah, he is muted. Yeah. I like think I had to give me one. Uh, yeah, that, that's... Oh, we um, lost Brian. Yeah. I blew up his phone. Sorry, Brian. That's all right. There he is. Uh, he's back. What do you think, Brian? I I don't know what to say. I like it. It's got the... Uh, uh, it's like a, uh, a Rick and Morty parody. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's very neat. I like it, too. I'm not... A <laughs> Hey, that's the one I was waiting on right there. I like, I, the, the, the eyes might need work, but I like it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I just noticed that. The, I, that's uh, the way I found it. That's the way I found it. 
So I did not. The only thing I did to add to this was text. That was it. I, I, I think it. I think it's a winner. Yeah. <laughs> Pop it a break every merchandise sales record in AIWF Mid Atlantic history. Oh my goodness sakes! <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, will these be available for advanced sales if everything goes yes. well? Okay. Yes. If everything goes well with them, will they'll be ready to uh, for uh, pre order by the end of this week? Mm, awesome, awesome. So next week, folks, be sure you tune into the program next week, and if everything goes well, we'll have information on that. You can pre order these. Uh, wonderful <laughs> deal with the steel shirts. Uh, speaking of things, this is a picture of Ty Tyson back. I believe this was 2014 after war games. And he sent out a rather macabre message on the AIWF mid Atlantic Facebook page over the last week and said, he's willing to look like this again, uh, going into the match with the fighters club. I got, I got to y'all talk. I got to make a phone call. Okay. Um, but I tell you, Brian uh, the, and Bill, the this thing with Ty Tyson and Jack and the Fighters Club uh, just seems to get it escalates each time we have a show. Anytime they're within five miles of each other, this thing ex ex escalates. And Ty Tyson almost bled out that night. This is a picture after they got him stopped bleeding and and you know in better shape, but. Um. Uh, yeah, this the war games is going to be a rough match. So that, that that's all I can say. Brian, what 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 is your expert analysis? You're you're definitely right. It, it is uh, the the war games in of itself is is a very dangerous match. But then when you get people who hate each other so much, like uh, uh, Jack and Ty Tyson. And uh, you know, and also the the members of Ty Tyson's team and the Fighters Club. The Fighters Club has been making everybody so angry by running roughshod and just uh, you know double, triple, quadruple teaming everybody. But this time they're they're all going to be in a cage. They're, it's all it's going to be. Um, it's finally the the Fighters Club are going to be tested by being in an actual fair fight and this is and and you know maybe, maybe they'll maybe they'll uh come out on top but this will be their first chance to actually prove that they're as bad as they say they are one of the things about this whole situation that has puzzled me brian danzig is since uh jack attacked rose tyson which is ty tyson's daughter She's been coming to ringside with him. And to me, just me on the outside, never have been in a professional wrestling match. So, that, you know, that's why I'm glad you're here. I can ask you. It seems like to me that bringing her to ringside. Now, in the war games, everybody's going to be locked in a steel cage. But like in a regular match, like we saw at the Carson Memorial Tournament, it seems like to me that bringing her to ringside would be more of a distraction than a benefit does that make sense you know they, it, it, yeah. it does make sense when when you when you just think about it on the surface mm -hmm. however when ty tyson remember uh at first uh you know, right after the 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 event after the attack on on rose happened mm -hmm. he had her stay in the back well that didn't work out she still came out mm -hmm. and uh, I think that uh, I think he's making the right decision by having her come out with him. That way he can keep an eye on her. I think that's, that's really his only option. It's not the greatest option. I mean, but that's, that's his best option is to, uh, is to her there where, where he can, uh, where he can watch her. If she's in the back, you know, who knows? Cause you know, that was something I was worried about. When, when she was in the back, I was like, you know, one, two members of the Fighters Club could go uh, into the back, search around until they found her. Yeah, because so, I mean, there's only so many places to hide at Veterans Park, that's for sure. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Well, I see where you're coming from there. Um, no doubt about it. Uh, let's see. 
Number, if you want to call in the show, is 336-429-2338. That number again, 336-429-2338. We're on Facebook Live, 734 in the East, uh, Monday, August 1st. If you're watching on YouTube or listening on podcast, uh, first, do me a favor on YouTube, like and subscribe and ring the bell. If you're listening on podcast, whatever platform it is, Apple, Spotify, or Le- uh, uh tune in app whatever uh please drop us a five-star rating it really helps the show and it only takes you like two seconds so uh please do that for us but uh if you're with us live on facebook 336-429-2338 if you want to talk to us or you can just message rick diesel in the chat that's fine too we're glad See, i to- like that this that's what i like i like the uh i like the chat rooms i really do like the chat rooms uh because mainly because people can interact with each other in there, you know? Yeah. And why is ref or Darren, referee Darren, music man Darren, whatever he is these days, Jack why does he tell you to check your Facebook messenger, man? I'm, I have read his message and I'm debating on whether to share it or not. It explains to me that Jay Briscoe tweeted a homophobic tweet a few years ago. That's why TBS said no. Um, I Okay, I get that. But that was a few, when you say a few years ago, are we talking about 2019 or are we talking about 2008? You know, I mean, at some point, I mean, can people, can people grow? I mean, I don't look at the world the same as I did when I was 23. I mean, you know, I mean, go ahead, Brian. I'm sorry. That just, that kind of stuff drives me absolutely crazy. Oh yeah, me too. And yeah, you're exactly right. Uh, You need to allow people room to grow. You can't just say this person said this 10 years ago. Therefore, uh, we can't have, they have no place uh, in wrestling anymore. I mean, it's right. It's just, you you have to, um, you know, like you said, you have to uh, allow for growth. And, And if you don't, then that's just going to, uh, incentivized not growing exactly i mean yeah give well, people a chance no. that mean if no one's going to give me a chance then i'll just uh uh keep doing the way doing things the way i've been doing exactly i mean you know we all as you get older with when you get older i mean with most people i mean some people are perpetual dumbasses their entire life but most people start to gain wisdom so right. I mean, um, you know, I know where he's going out there for a second, man. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and get older too. You meet more people. Mm-hmm. You broaden your uh, your outlook because you know maybe you you'd never met a gay person before, and then you meet a gay person. You're like, oh, they're just like me. They just happen to like the same sex that they are, but mm-hmm. they're still a person just like me. Man, and, this you know, conversation took a weird turn while i was going well well you said something about uh referee darren was telling me to uh read my messenger and i had and i was debating on whether or not to read what he sent me uh it said jay briscoe tweet, tweeted a homophobic tweet a few years ago that's why tbs doesn't want him on there I heard and, that. and uh I heard and, that. and brian and i were just talking about like how how that kind of thing annoys us because it uh, are we are we talking about 2019 are we talking about 2008? I mean, people change as they get older, you know, and like Brian said, when you meet more people, you know, um, your, your mind changes about a lot of things as you get older. Well, I, I'm sure that it, there's a good chance that whatever he tweeted in 2019, he, it, it may not even be his mindset now. Exactly. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's like Brian said, you meet people and, and you, you see, well, they're different, but they're not. Yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying? We're, so, but then there's also those people who takes things and makes them something that they're not. So mm-hmm. without seeing the tweet, I have no right to judge it either way. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I haven't seen it either. But yeah, there are, it's, Twitter is the worst. At There are people who are specifically on there to find to dig and find something that they can find something wrong somebody has said and and they feel it it makes them feel better about themselves to 
to point out something wrong somebody else has done. Yeah. And yeah, it, ain't, it ain't nobody took the brutal <laughs> beatings like it that I know of as much as I have. What, on Twitter? On anything. Oh. Everybody likes to go after Rick Diesel about being something. Yeah. Uh, okay. Reagan just uh, uh, told me the tweet was in 2013. Oh, my God. Apologize, and he made a contribution to a, uh, he made a contribution. He, he apologized and uh, made a, a contribution to an LGBT um, uh, organization. So that is and that was what almost what was that nine years ago? <laughs> nine years ago, his right. whole it's outlook could have changed by then. Right. Well, I mean, he apologized. Yeah. What more do you want? I mean, you're just going to say no? That's not good enough. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what they do. That's not good enough. Right. He will donate his full pay from the two ring of honor events to the Partners Against Hate. So charitable organization. Wow. <laughs> oh, right. God. I mean, that, that's the interesting thing, though, with it being on Twitter. I mean, I've ran into a lot of fake accounts, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do we know it wasn't a bot? That is true. Mm -hmm. I got yeah. like 15 likes of Bliss is messaging me every day. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> you might need to start uh, blocking some uh, Russian yeah. bots, buddy. Uh, I, I, I need some uh, iTunes gift cards from me. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just SummerSlam. I think you can afford your own iTunes gift cards there, Alexa. So. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Oh, mercy. Well, let me pay some bills real quick here. Uh, I'd like to, again, thank our first and, you know, those of you who have kids know that, uh, you know, you tell your kids that uh, they're, they're all your favorites, but you really have a special place in your heart for the oldest. And Branch Management was the first sponsor of this show. Not saying we love them the most, but we, we probably do. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm just trying to give middle and, and middle kids like all kinds of anxiety right now. So go take a Xanax and come on back. It'll be all right. Uh, but Branch Management is a tree service that operates in Mountain Area, Surrey County of North Carolina. Wait a minute. Did I just encourage drug use on this show? Uh, they can help you with branches that are maybe too close. I'll come to back to haunt you in eight years. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? I'll get canceled, right? Okay. Um, not, that, uh, not that I care, but I'll tell you a funny Twitter story after this. They can help you with branches that are maybe too close to structures, normal pruning, or complete tree removal. They offer very competitive rates. And are here to serve you. You may also be eligible for a one hundred dollar referral bonus. Now, for the tree service, you want to call three three six three two five five three zero zero. That's three three six three two five five three zero zero for more information or to set up an appointment. But branch management not only does arborist type work, they also do general landscaping, gutter cleaning, and pressure washing. Now, that's a different number. If you want, you're interested in the general landscaping services, you want to call 336-648-2487. That's 336-648-2487 for the landscaping, gutter cleaning, and pressure washing. That is branch management. They are here to serve you. Here, once again, the phone number. If you want to give us a call, 336-429-2338. So we were talking about Twitter a little bit. So one Sunday, early Sunday morning, Jim Cornette sent out a tweet talking about um, how he wished, you know, because he's he's really politically charged, right? Um, and he was talking about how he wished the economy, this was during while Trump was president, and he said he wished the economy would go into recession uh, because it would make people vote Democrat. And so I replied to him, I was like, hey, man, it you know i kind of understand where you're coming from but wishing financial ruin on anybody is never a good idea that's not not a good thing to do you don't want to see anybody have financial hardship right political or not well he retweeted me and agreed with me agreed with me he said i was just trying to think yeah he was like yeah you're right i see what you mean but I was just trying to uh, come out of figure out a different way to smarten them up. Right. Because I guess he looked at my profile and seen, you know, independent wrestling, whatever. 
So he agreed with me. Within 30 seconds, my phone started going bzz, 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 and it did it for 45 minutes and almost ran the battery completely down. And those people called me everything but a child of God. It was unnerving. Like when I think about it still, it like gives me cold chills. Like how they, they just came after me like this angry mob with torches and pitchforks. It was like the last scene of Frankenstein on Twitter, you know, and it was scary, man. So I sent Jim a direct message and I was like, please don't ever retweet me again. I've been called everything. And I don't know if he ever saw it, but I was like, please don't ever retweet me again. I ain't fucking around with no celebrities no more. I just got called everything but a child of God, you know, and he, you know, I hadn't had much interaction with him, but I, I'm telling you what, I don't mess around with people with blue check marks anymore on Twitter. That, that was unnerving. Was you it know, all because you said you didn't want people to have financial hardships? Yeah. Yeah. And, and Do they, they want people to have financial hardship. Yes. There are people out there that are so, I mean, we're in a recession. So it got know, we'll his wish. That plays out. Well, you know, it, I don't get that, man. You know, politics aside, you know, I got my opinion on politics, uh, just like everybody else does, but I don't want to see anybody suffer financial ruin or have, you know, hard time. Yeah, because on their it'll family. make them vote a certain way. Yeah, that like to me is just just the dumbest shit I have ever heard. And uh and and the thing, the funny thing about it was is that he retweeted me and agreed with me. And right. We, and it just explained his reason for sending out that tweet. You know, that it was kind of just an angle, whatever. Maybe they was mad at you because you got him to change his mind. No, well, it's, it's that you dared to disagree with him in the first place. Man, the cult of Cornette, you can't mess with him. That is true. Yeah. yeah. I, but I was polite. We were polite. It was cordial. Yeah. Can you imagine if I disagreed with you, if he had retweeted you and disagreed with you, how much worse? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, I there guess had I to who didn't respond because they saw that uh, they actually read it and saw that you that he had agreed with you. There were some people who didn't even read it. They just saw that he quote tweeted you, mm -hmm. did even read it and just attacked. Yeah, they probably read yours. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Probably didn't even read what he had to say about it. They exactly. just seen your response and zeroed in on that. So yeah. So believe me, I I got my butt scared by Twitter. I cannot imagine what these celebrity, you know, those pseudo celebrities, not only just in the wrestling business, but like sports figures and and like people that work in the movies and television, the kind of crap they have to put up with on on Twitter. You know, the the lady that played Rose in the new Star Wars movie, she ended up quitting social media because people were being so mean to her. Mm. And you know, all she was using it for was to promote a damn movie. It's a right. curse, man. It's it, it's a blessing and a curse, but it just shows you the type of people that's in the world now. Mm. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It just shows you the type of people that's out there that'll it, take advantage of any situation to 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 just start something. Yeah, you know? and, and they're real brave behind their keyboards and their phones. They say things that they would never say to another person and uh face to face because they know that if they made certain comments to people face to face, they'd get punched in the face. You know, there'd be repercussions, you know. Right. So. It's easy to be brave behind a keyboard. And it's also easy to be mean behind a keyboard mm -hmm. when you're not face with somebody. Yes. It's a lot harder to be as cruel as some people are uh, when, when they're just typing back at words. Yeah. If they, face to face with that person they would they would never uh say what they were saying they definitely wouldn't say it the way they, they were saying on a side note justin flash is school shopping all right <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah he put it on there so so look justin flash somebody was arguing with me at the last show that you play baseball and not softball would you settle that argument for us please you, you know what He's what's softball. your that's what i thought too yeah Justin Flash has softballs. Uh, see, Rose Tyson. So, uh, 
Uh, so. he, he's a softball man. You can tell by how stocky his legs are. And... <laughs> oh, mercy. Uh, so, I don't know. Come after me, Twitter, you bitches. Uh, yeah, yeah. Send your hate tweets to at <laughs> Ripley. I egg stuff on. You know what I'm saying? I, was, I don't yeah. know why. Send your hate tweets to at Rick Diesel. Uh, 24 yeah. 7, right? 247. Come get me. Come and get I, me, all you women who need to be washing dishes somewhere. And I and, and I am at Mad Matt Concord. I'm gonna regret that. I have a feeling, but yeah, come on. And I don't, I don't do I have Twitter, Matt? Yeah, you do. I, you used do to I? post you used to post on it a lot. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Okay. But uh yeah, uh, and come after me the wrong way and watch how fat you think Tony Schiavone used to block people about seven years ago real quick. Try me on for size because I, I really do. And I never look back at the people that I've blocked. So once you get blocked, it's that's it. So that, that's the only way to do Twitter is once somebody starts on you, you just and they can think they won all mm -hmm. they want. That's you see that all the time. They're like, uh, I I wear this as a badge of honor that this person blocked me. It's like all they did was press a button because you were they you were annoying them. Yeah, that's not yeah. The, that's <laughs> you didn't do anything spectacular. You're just I was annoying. This person blocked me. I'm so proud of myself. Yeah, like, you 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 just you're proud of yourself because you were an asshole. I mean, right. like, yeah, it, it's like somebody switching seats uh, on the bus because they don't want to sit beside you because you stink. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you didn't do nothing spectacular. Just because you got a little more leg room now don't mean that you don't have body odor, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> it's sad in our profession and celebrities, we can't post how we feel about anything. Oh, I can. Uh, I can, too. <laughs> I will. Well, yeah, because I'm like no celebrity. Y'all only <laughs> run two shows a month, so I like to get booked elsewhere, too. <laughs> I got you. Yeah, yeah. that's true. That's true. We're home. Hey, and and, and uh, just so everybody remembers, you know, we are doing the Surrey County Fair. We're doing shows on uh, this Saturday the sixth and next Saturday the thirteenth in the evening. We are having wrestling at the Surrey County Fair. Oops, and I, I was up there today. That's why I look like this because I was up there, you know, just kind of getting things all set up and working around. And that's you know that's why I look like I've been out in the field. But he's uh, out in the field. Yeah, I was, man, out in the field at the Veterans Memorial Park and the fair. Dude, they just kept bringing rides in. Really? It so it's a new fair a lot company bigger. this year. And it's like they had tractor trailers lined up all the way out the driveway there because they're just – and then they have to, they've had to stretch it out across the field even bigger because it's so massive this year. Well, compare, compare what you see so far for this year's fair to compare what we saw last year. How much bigger is it? Twice well, it looks like a fair this year, and it makes last year's look like a street car. Wow. They, okay. they, they've, got, they've got like five or six more rides, and the food trucks just kept coming in. We have a whole line right there where T Streets is. Mm -hmm. um, and then they've got, man, they got everything. I think I seen one come in and had nothing but coffee. Weird. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And they got all the deep fried foods that they haven't normally have. Like they got deep fried uh, Snickers and deep fried Reese cuts. They got a trailer's got all that in it. Oh man, yeah, that yeah, stuff's fun. Man. Man. Mm -hmm. About that, y'all. I've had some questions asked from people I know that comes to the shows. Mm -hmm. um, how is that going to affect the entrance and all that to the show? You buy tickets. Yeah, well, to the, it, it's, the show is free with paid fair mission yeah. you have to pay to get in the fair to see the show but the 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 wrestling is free with the fair admission yeah they were talking about more like setup wise where you go to still no, it's still all the same, the same it's all the same we got to build it it's just like it normally is okay good i didn't answer their questions because they were bugging me about that i'm like i gotta find out yeah, yeah everything's the same we're, we're the only ones in the building so the setup is exactly the same uh, it just, uh, like I said, the only thing is you just have to get fair admission in the gate. Mm -hmm. and I can't remember how much it is this year, but admission in the gate and wrestling is free. And we'll probably do it like on Saturday. We'll do, I think, two or three shows ever yeah. so often. Yeah. yeah I'm, 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 I'm going to be at the shows. So, yeah, I, Mickey uh, and them, 
a lot of them must tell me it's going to be pretty busy that day for me. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. The and let us know. Let us know because the guys are wrestlers and, and, and commentators, referees, all that, who's booked on the show, let us know. Yeah, there you go. Announcers, whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. We have uh, tickets. We have passes, vendor passes for you guys to get in. So just let us know when you okay. get in the park. Oh, okay. Cool. Yep. So, uh, speaking of food and the fair and teas treats is going to be there and they are a food truck service that operates out of Mount Airy, North Carolina, that is available in most parts of the state and can be at multiple locations at the same time. They have a full menu, including hot dogs, hamburgers, chicken, milkshakes, ice cream, and many varieties of funnel cakes and now feature many donuts. That whole variety of products is going to be available at the fair. Is that correct? Rick diesel? Yes. Uh -huh. So when it comes to delicious quality as well as reasonable prices, you cannot beat Tea's Treats. You can see them for the next couple of weeks out at the Surrey County Fair. You can find out more information about their um, locations after the fair by visiting them at facebook.com slash Tea's Treats, or you can give them a call at 336-755-8204. That's 336-755-8204. Eight two zero four. Mm -mm. Yes, and we'll just pull up this slide. Uh, yeah. Fair Reagan ask uh, about what times, and you know, even though she's sitting there beside Brian, hey, I hey. actually typed it back in. I guess she didn't <laughs> want to be all unsophisticated. I don't and know. Yell into the microphone. <laughs> hey, it ain't as bad that she that I answered it, knowing that she's there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> What times, like? Well, I think it's going to be the. See, the thing about it is, they kind of give us leeway. You know what I'm saying? And we kind of to judge it by the other attractions. You know, like, like they're going to have the motorcycle, crazy motorcycle people up there again this year. Yeah. Uh, so it's usually around. We do do it around five and six, seven. I mean, you know what I'm saying? We'll do two or three shows starting around um, four or five o'clock in the afternoon. I guess yeah. more. I want to know what time it's what time it started. Oh, the, the wrestling or the fair? The wrestling. Yeah, that's that's what it is. Because like I said, we do it, – it won't really start to probably about 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. And then we'll do like uh, so, like every hour we'll be doing some matches or something like that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see if I can find out. Uh, the fair opens at 1 on Saturday. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Best funnel cakes ever. From a funnel cake expert. <laughs> Let me see if I can go on my Google machine here. And, and I hear they're going to have turkey legs this year, too. Oh, boy. Yes. Uh, that's going to be fun. Let's see. Even ones you can buy and eat. <laughs> I see one of the girls from the ride. So the turkey legs are already there. <laughs> Surrey County Agriculture. Come get me, Twitter. Amusements of America is the Midway it, I'm sorry. Entertainment <laughs> by Majestic Spectacular Motorcycles and AIWF Mid-Atlantic Wrestling. Ten days this year, so that's great. Uh, oh, yeah. Starts on Friday, ends on Sunday, August 14th. Uh, let me see here. I'm just going through there. Majestic Motorcycle Show is going to be nightly, 6.30 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. And I saw that last year. That's a good, good show. If you like stunts, is that the motor? Ball. Say again. Is that the motorcycle in the ball? Yes, that's one yes. of the stunts I do. Yeah. And listen to this, folks. General admission for the fair is only six dollars. Oh, wow. Six dollars can't beat it. Now, um, on Monday, August eighth, they're having. Uh, wow, this is a good deal on Monday, August eighth. It's called it car carload night. Carload Easy. night. 40 bucks and you can bring as many people as you can squeeze in the car and everything's included even the rides so that covers your gate admission the entertainment the unlimited ride armbands all that on monday night wow uh and it says for saturday august the 6th gates open at 1 p.m all right so then that that'll be this saturday but the fair actually starts on friday and opens up uh at five o'clock and they're going to have fireworks for the opening night of the fair so, man, it's going to be a lot of fun this year. And it looks like it's even bigger and better than, than yes. it's been before. So, I'm excited to come up there. I am. I see really... a little kitty, like almost like a roller coaster. It's one of those, you know, where it just got like the little heels and stuff that's putting it, like riding a dragon or something. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, uh, didn't Dragon, I... much like the girl I seen uh, that works for the fair. Her ankles were dragging. Anyway, uh, <laughs> oh, sorry. God bless. Stop me, man. I can't, man. Well, we're almost out of time. So, oh, another cool thing about that uh, Ric Flair show last night on the fact that Ric Flair did not die, even though he came very <laughs> close to uh was that bob coddle opened and closed the show and i was telling rick diesel about this as it was going on you know that 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 was a good moment for me to see bob intro the show you could tell that they went to his house and with a green screen and shot the opening and closing but he did his classic until next time so long for now and that i always use to pay homage to bob and i just thought that was great you know bob's in his pushing 90 or in his 90s now you can tell his mind's still pretty sharp. I mean, because you can see in his eyes, you know, they're still really right. His, his mind is still there. But, you know, I mean, when you get in your 90s, man, you can't just pack up and go to Nashville for, you know, a, a binge w- weekend of drinking with Ric Flair. Uh, <laughs> so, and I understood this is what I'm hearing. Now, I don't know how true this is, but. You know, Flair had trained really hard for this match and everything, but like I heard that he spent the weekend drinking and partying. And look, when he came out on that stage last night, I'm not saying he looked like he was hung over, but he looked like he was hurt. <laughs> and and uh and after Jay Lethal gave him a vertical suplex in that match, Flair did not get up off the mat again until the match was over. And even then he just rolled out to the floor to be interviewed by Tony Schiavone. So I am glad Rick got that out of his system, and I hope he never does it again. Because I want to say thanks for putting it on Facebook all night long. Yeah, I watched <laughs> Facebook video. Oh, yeah. and I, I got to give a shout out to their promoters too. You know, Conrad Thompson that does all those wrestling podcasts was the promoter of that event along with David Crockett, and. When I bought, I went on Fight TV and bought that pay per view. It unlocked like, God, I don't know how many hours of Starcast programming those wrestling conventions from the past, where they've had the Four Horsemen and JJ Dillon and Bret Hart and all these other wrestlers doing these live talk shows or live podcasts or whatever. To the point that I'm never going to be able to watch it all, and I thought that was a real nice bonus. They really like tried to make you feel like you got a lot of bang for your buck. And, uh, you know, I, I just, I thought that was really cool. I thought I was just getting the wrestling show, but I got a ton of extra stuff, but I don't, so much that Hello? I, uh, Oh, Trista. I missed a bunch of calls from you. What is, what do you want? Uh, I have to get through this show that you conveniently called in on again. Nope, not yet. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell me she don't time that, Matt. Yeah. Well, she did try to get in after eight o'clock. Uh, but Trista, don't call a show shit because <laughs> yeah, you you make a lot of money at that damn food truck. So <laughs> you know. Yeah. That's all right. I'll have a word with her come Saturday. You do that. Yeah. She I'm not have sure. time to listen, but you give it a shot. <laughs> I'll, I'll figure out. I can usually say something to get her attention. I have, <laughs> <laughs> at least make her turn around and say, "What the fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, all right, folks. So we're out of time. It is over the top of the hour. We know we want to. You, you guys want to go watch Raw. Some of you do. So we'll let that happen. Any final thoughts, Bill, Rick, Diesel, Brian, Danzig? Before we go, I'm just looking forward to the whole month of August. It's going to be great. It's going to be fun. It's a big month for wrestling. I mean, we got wrestling every weekend in August, Rick Diesel. Yeah, go check the AWF Mid Atlantic Wrestling page. Get your tickets for the floor seats. It's going to be good. Uh, God help us if this uh, 25th anniversary deal with a steel t shirt. God, I hope it goes good and there's no lawsuits. I think we'll be good. All right. I'm confident. Get them while you can. Yeah, right. they're, they're not going to last long. I can tell you that. <laughs> By the time we finish the deal with the steel, they they will be sold out. I really feel like. Yes. 
All right. Well, that's going to wrap us up for this week, fans. Don't forget to join us at the fair this weekend, Saturday, August 6th, the Surrey County Fair at Veterans Park. If you've never been to the Surrey County Fair, it is a blast. You got to come up and check it out. It is so much fun. And we'll see you all there. So for Bill Pauly, Rick Diesel, and Brian Danzi, I am Mad Matt Carter. Thank you for joining us for Ringside Wrestling. We'll be here right back here next week at 7 p.m. on Monday night. We'll see you next week, fans. And until then, so long for now.